For a stage, I never know what he's gonna do, and it's okay because whatever he does, it's always fucking amazing. Please put your hands together for the one and only Ski! <laughs> I awoke with the taste, the iron tang of the red dust in my mouth and my nose. In those first few moments, the sun's warmth was benevolence. It wouldn't last long, and I clambered to my feet, sore and weary. And around me, everyone else did too. One at a time, joints creaking, we stood until we created a forest of our own bodies coated with the red dust, and we began walking. There was no leader, there was no <clears throat> purpose, there was no point. We just walked because it was the only thing we could do, and the sun got higher. If we could do something other than shuffle, it's probable that we would have been drowned out the sun with the dust, because it wasn't sand, it wasn't gritty, it was, it was like ash but it was red and it was bitter and it covered us and it rose just high enough to give the illusion of protection from the sun. But it didn't. And all through the days we marched, it aided us. It bittered our skin. Blisters grew like the only plants we ever saw and popped, drizzling the only rain we would ever feel. And this was our life. This is how we went from day to day, sleeping, Passing out from the pain, from the exhaustion, from the weariness. Every evening as the sun finally went away. And then freezing through the night. Only to wake again at lays first, uh, the rays dawn. Until one morning, we woke up and we saw it. The red wall. It stretched as far as we could see. From horizon to horizon. And so tall that just over the top of it, we could see the tops of white icy mountains. Now, we hadn't a goal, we hadn't a purpose, but for some reason this wall held almost a almost religious significance for us, as if our, our wanderings had meaning rather than just our tortured existence. And this wall was not simply a wall, but a test of our faith, a test of our ability. Here we were in the desert, and now we had found an enemy, something we could test ourselves against. And after weeks of not hearing any noises but our own shuffling feet, we heard the moan from our own throats as we tried to remember what it was to cry out. And we went forward. And we went forward through a day and through a night and through a day and the wall got bigger and the wall got bigger and our voices started to relearn what they were for. And the moans that we had started, the croaking gasps became cries of, it will fall, we will bring it down. And then we were nearing the wall. We could see it. The first of the people had reached the wall and they were throwing themselves against it, slamming their hands on it, trying to bring it down. And we all felt it. It was electric. It coursed through us. And we cried a giant scream, a sonic boom that should have shaken the wall down. And we charged and it was, it was amazing. We weren't simply us by ourselves. We were everyone coursing against this wall to bring it down. And I remember I couldn't move fast enough. I couldn't carry myself fast enough towards the wall. And I started beating on the person ahead of me, screaming at them to move faster, to get there faster because I could bring the wall down. I could be the one to tear it to make it through to the other side, to the snow, to the, to the different place. And then I was carried away. The wave of us, the, the emotion, the people behind me beating on me became hands, pushing me forward, and I realized to my horror that I had no control over what I was doing. And by the time I reached the wall, I was more terrified than anything else. And when I hit the wall, it wasn't with my fists, it was with my face, and they drug me along it pressing my bloody cheeks to the wall. That was the only effort I could give to this fight. And I blacked out. And I woke up staggering drunk with pain and exhaustion, miles from where the fight was going on. Around me, broken survivors, missing arms, broken in legs or in ribs, gasping painfully their last moments of life. 
I turned and I walked. And from this distance, I could look back. And I could see what was going on. And once I saw the wall, I knew what it was. I knew what I had to do. And I walked further down until I found a place of the wall I could call my own. And I picked up a bone and I began drawing on the wall. After so many hours, days, years, it became a cone, a mantra that my arm did rather than my voice. And I watched as this bone melted away, but the wall melted with it. Where once there was nothing but a solid surface, there was now lines. And when the bone ran out, I used my fingers, sticking them behind, down. And eventually the nails gave way. And eventually my fingerprints disappeared into the wall. And those became my blood. And then the tips of my fingers, the bone ground away. Until one day, I could reach in. And I could pull that first brick out of the wall. That was the only time I ever cried in just one tear. And then I started again on the next brick. The mantra with the hand until eventually it gave way. By this time I had worn down most of the first finger, so I started using other fingers trying to, to make this hole appear, to bring it larger, to make myself go. And brick after brick, I made a hole in this wall, and I climbed into the darkness, away from this burning sun, away from the red dust that choked and gagged and covered me, and I kept working, but I knew I was reaching the end. There wasn't enough. The desert, the being pressed against the wall, and now this, it was too much, and I could feel what I had left slowly draining out as each path with my hand carved deeper and deeper until I had nothing left to carve with on the hand, and I started anew on the other, and brick after brick, I drug these things out with my dying breaths and pushed them into the red sand on the other side, and I forced myself to keep going. This was the wall. This wall was myself, and as I buried myself in the wall, I learned to destroy the wall, and as I pushed on that last red brick and felt it tumble out the other side, I thought to myself, perhaps you can win. And that's how I died. Snowflakes on my lips and my hands in the ice.